Hi, everybody. It's Barry Chamish. You're here, you know, it's Tuesday, 6 Eastern Time. And I've got a very unusual and difficult show. All right, so you have to be with me. My first guest is Martin de la Sengla. He can correct the pronunciation afterwards. But he became interested. Well, his he's related to the Grand Master of the Order of the Knights of St. John in Malta. This is at the end of the medieval age, which I guess is 15th century. But he got curious and he visited Malta several times and he found out some amazing stuff about the Catholic Order of Malta, which for now we'll call S-M-O-M. Martin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hello, Barry. Hi there. All right, just know this is a very uh, good story, but also a very complicated one. What is S-M-O-M? And by the way, does your, you know, medieval ancestor, did he know there would be an S-M-O-M when he was the Grand Master of the Order of the Knights of St. John in Malta? All right, away you go. Yes, uh it, it is quite not different from then. The uh, organization was already intact when he was Grand Master. It was about fighting the Saracens. The Order of Malta had already the experience, they say experience when they were pulled out from Rhodes um, and evicted from Rhodes, that they need some intelligence and some information about the enemy because the world had changed you know the order was founded in uh, Jerusalem oh gosh. At, about, at the beginning of the uh, Crusades and uh, when when the Crusades were finished with uh, the loss of Acre then they went to Rhodes and why uh, where's Malta in this, uh, if I may Malta, ask? Malta is coming later. All After right. they went to Malta. But let me tell the story. What happened was, it. in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, they got in close contact with Saracens, which was a name for Muslims in them days, for Muslim tribes in them days. And uh, they did not only fight them, Saracens, they, they also watched them, they made business with them, and uh, they also tried to understand them. And um, uh, I, uh, Excuse me one second. These are the Crusades where they captured them and slaughtered anyone in their way. So, I'm, I, excuse me why I'm lost. They're doing business with them? Yes, yes, yes. You know, there were uh, at least three orders, three Catholic orders. What, the first order that was founded in Jerusalem, before there was any war, uh, the first order was what we to know today as the Order of Malta. It was the Order of St. John in those days. It was St. John the Baptist. Not St. John the Revelator, but St. John the Baptist. And the order was founded, and it was a hospitaller order. There was no, because there was no other military, they developed some military order, uh, some, some military, some soldiers, and they also had some chaplains with them. And this was the order which we know today as the Order of Malta. Again, uh, later, they came on the Crusades? They they prepared the way for the Crusades. You know, okay. they, they, uh, uh, they uh, cared for, the, for soldiers and they gave also the soldiers information about how to fight the Saracens the best. You know, it was in the homeland of, the, of Muslims, of, of Saracens, which, li which were living there and uh, the order already had much information because they already had cared for some of the Saracens. Also, we have doctors with us, we can help you if you are sick or if you are wounded. And 
So they received some information there and gave oh, it, it on. They were spies for the enemy, for the crusades what they against the Arabs, right? That's what they did in parallel. And then the world changed. You know, Acre got lost and the uh, crusades finished. And the order then went for a short time uh, to another island and then they went to Rhodes. And in Rhodes they lived for several centuries. It, it became right. then the order of Rhodes. And they possessed Rhodes, they ruled Rhodes, they had huge assemblies there, they invited people from, from uh, the continent for seminaries and so on and there they quickly noti noticed that they need to have ships so they built fleets the order built fleets and they crossed the Mediterranean and in the same time the land which we know today Turkey this land had some dramatic changes because during the Crusades the Byzantine Empire was, you know, <laughs> was weakened. And uh, the Byzantines weren't, mu they were much later, Empire, I believe. You know, the way from Europe, from Western Europe to Jerusalem was no other way but through the Byzantine Empire. If you didn't sail through the Mediterranean. Mediterranean. All but right. The and all the people which uh, wanted to go to Jerusalem, they... Most of them went away by land. Okay, that makes sense. The Ottomans came after them. The so they went through came. Turkey. Yeah. The now, Ottomans what's came. the connection here going through Turkey? The Ottomans, the Ottomans re-established a military force and they took over country for country around or, or tribe for tribe around the Mediterranean and also to the Arabic countries, even to Asia. All right, so, and they were fought during the Crusades and thrown out of the Holy Land, right? Yes, yes, the okay. order and all the, nearly all the Christians, yeah. Nearly, not all, but, but nearly all the military Christians, yeah. All the military. They had lost Acre, this was the last battle, of the Crusades and uh, they tried to go somewhere else. They were soldiers. No one wanted them in the Holy Land anymore. And the Ottoman power was too strong for them. Yeah. Uh, I've been at the hill where this battle took place. It's got two horns. It's over the Sea of Galilee. And now they're out. Now, where they're in roads now. Yeah. When did they go to Malta and why? They were in Rhodes and in Rhodes the Ottomans laid a siege around them and uh, you know they were the order was overcome by the Ottomans. All intelligence didn't help. The Ottomans had too much power, too many ships, too many soldiers and uh, also there also the uh, Order believed that one soldier of the order could fight 50 enemies. There were too many of the Ottoman soldiers and they had to flee. And in secret discussions and negotiations and also in, in very fearful fights, they were allowed to escape from Rhodes and to leave the island on ships. And that's what they have done. And from and there, Malta they was went, their destination. From there, the order went to Italy. There was no other place to go but to Rome, back to Rome. the church. Yeah, to Italy. They went to no, Italy. No, no, I'm, I'm. So Malta came after. Yeah. Okay. They went to Italy, and there, when they were there after some years, many years, the King of Spain made a deal with the Order and he sold them Malta. The island of Malta was Spanish until then 
and the king of Spain sold the island of Malta for to receive a Maltese falcon every year. That's the deal. You know the Maltese falcon? That's the price. I know the movie. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you can elaborate. No, that that's the truth. That's that's not only a movie. That's that's the historical truth. The Maltese falcon every year a Maltese falcon to deliver to the king of Spain was the deal for the order to not only to get Malta but also to be the emperor there to be to to reign there to rule there. You know the order ruled Malta. All right, I understand. I think my listeners do as well. I think you did very well. Now we've got this Order of the Knights Templars, and yeah. they ceased to exist and were later taken over by the Order of St. John of Jerusalem that oh, later became SMOM. It's no, hard. It really to, is. They didn't cease to exist. They didn't cease to exist, but, you know, the... The work that they have done, the way they they had they existed, changed, and it was the way they existed later, much later. We are not in that time now. Later, the name was changed to SMOM to the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. There we go. So, all right. Uh, well, when was it, by the way? When did they become the Sovereign Military Order of Malta? I'm, I have not researched exactly the year when this uh, name change occurred. Uh, you know, the sovereign sovereign is, is uh, <laughs> permanently in discussion because uh, some countries uh, do not love this sovereign. And meanwhile, meanwhile, now I'm. Let's make. Let, let me discuss the word sovereign for a short moment. Sure. The order is back in the island of Malta since the year 2001. And uh, in Malta, they do not rule Malta, but they got uh, two buildings and part of a city, uh, which is their territory. That's the territory of the order. But the jurisdiction in these places is still under the government of Malta. You know, the now, civil government. I'm going to add something. Yeah? Just to remember, I'm doing my best for my listeners here. This is one heck of a story. By the way, this call is coming from Germany, and this man has got something personal to say. And it changes reality a lot. In short, the SMOM, they were the spies for the Vatican. They gathered intelligence. How and when did this happen? Now, you see, in, when they were in Malta and the Ottoman Empire became more and more powerful, ships of the Ottoman Empire went to Christian countries, to, to coasts or to island, and they took women and children captives and sold them as slaves in their homeland and they took away food and whatever they found and destroyed and burned down cities in islands or along the coasts and the order of Malta was were the only ones which 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 could fight them at that moment and they had to gather intelligence what is the next thing that the Ottomans try to do and therefore they had some battles they had some battles at sea and you know when a ship was sunk then the sailors and the admiral and the captain and whoever was there was taken captive if they could be saved and <laughs> they, these had been questioned now I'm gonna ask you again you yeah? said the intelligence they gathered was for yeah. the Vatican, which is different. They're kind of sovereign in your interpretation. They have their own navy. Now, surely, did they? I mean, all right, let's go. I, when did I, they become the intelligence agency for the yeah. Vatican? I, I want to tell you the, 
the history. You know, they have not been from the very beginning, but it started with questioning, interrogating, interrogating the enemies, which were saved from sinking ships. And also some of the Order's sailors, they also lost ships, and some of the orders of the sailors of the orders were taken captive by the Ottomans, and sometimes there was an exchange of prisoners of war. You know, they were prisoners of war, and there was some hard uh, interrogations sometimes, and the best that could happen was that a sailor of the enemy was made a galley slave, slave on the galley. Okay. So, and with these exchanges also came information. And information flowed in. And so it happened that Claude de la Sengle, when he was made the uh, Grand Master of the, Malti, of the Order in Malta, then he knew that the Ottoman will come one day and lay siege on Malta. And that's what happened after he fortified Malta. That was the first thing that he has done to fortify Malta, partly with private money. He fortified the Grand Harbor and, and uh, built... All right, fort. with the intelligence, they followed the plot of the Ottomans. They fortified yeah. Malta, they had their fort. own operation, essentially, yeah. in Malta. Yeah. Where does this take us to SMOM becoming the intelligence branch of the Vatican? Yeah. Then, now after he had fortified Malta, there was the Ottomans came, laid a great siege, and after in the aftermath of the siege, the Ottomans lost the war at sea and they lost their navy, and all the kinds of wars changed. The Ottomans that later came by land, late siege at Vienna, you know, and there yeah. another, type, another type of intelligence was needed. And there was it that the Order of Malta changed the way how to, how to deal with the enemy. You know, it, not in vain that uh, the Ottomans never could take Vienna. North All right, now, again, this yep. order was, was it Catholic? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was Catholic, and Grand Master Claude de la Sengle, before he became Grand Master, he was ambassador at the Pope. He was the ambassador of the order with the Pope. There we go. Now we bring in your family. And, by the way, you're, you're doing well but it really is a complicated story, all right? Putting it mildly. All right, your ancestor was now the ambassador to the Pope, and you now are? we get the tie with SMOM and the Vatican at last, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, now let's come to the, to the newer days, uh, after or during World War II. If you, Richard if you Galen. Want to that. Reinhard Galen? Yep. Yep. If you want to All right, let's go to Reinhard Galen, who has a half brother doing something in the Vatican. You don't say what, Giovanni Galen. First of all, what was he doing in the Vatican? No. Reinhard Galen, Reinhard Galen was a man who, for Hitler, spied behind the eastern, behind, you know, behind the eastern front lines. He had an organization to spy behind the eastern front line for the Nazis. And this Reinhard Galen had a half-brother, Giovanni Galen. And this Giovanni Galen was born in Rome to an other mother, you know, to another wife of uh, Galen's father. And he became an aide or, or a secretary to the then Grand Master of the mi Sovereign Military Order of Malta. I and get so it, I get it. 
by the way, folks, this is going to lead us to Alan Dulles and, and Operation Paperclip and all kinds of things. I promise you we're getting there. All right. Now, with Reinhardt, where does he fit in? And why did Dulles negotiate with him after the war? Uh, not after. It was. It started during the war. Really? Reinhard, Gehlen, Reinhard Gehlen placed himself such a way that he was taken a prisoner of war. Before that, he had sought the contact to Alan Dallas in Switzerland. You know, <laughs> Reinhard Gehlen could have stayed in Switzerland to wait for the end of the war. Nothing would have happened to him. But he wanted more than just uh, uh, not to be taken captive. So Reinhard Gehlen tried to get the attention of Alan Dulles and he discussed with Alan Dulles and you know there was much I, I, I do not want to say pressure but there was much of the contact to his brother also in the SMOM yeah? in the sovereign and by the way Alan Dulles was an originator of the CIA we should mention that the OSS, yeah. whatever. Now, what happened was America had the, had its own intelligence. This was the OSS. You know, during World War Two, was the OSS was a military uh, spy agency to spy, especially on the Nazis and on the German army and whatever there was. And. Um, Reinhard Gehlen did one thing, he told, oh, this man, I know him, he does not only work for you, he gives also information to the Nazis. And this he did for several important men within the OSS, and by this the OSS got destroyed. Uh, it wasn't destroyed so much as it evolved into the CIA. With different people, except Ellen Dallas. All right. Now, Galen, by the way, is in prison. He, is he in touch with both sides? He's in prison. I would think that's the end of his ties to the Nazis. No. Uh, Galen, I, I, Galen, I cannot find that he ever was in prison. That may be information presented to the public. But Galen was permanently in discussions, and uh, you know there is also the Catholic Church, which uh, protected him, because they had their plans with Reinhard Galen. It was uh, they they had uh, it was such a great chance to use these two brothers, Reinhard Galen and Giovanni Galen, to form an agency which would serve the. Catholic Church and the goals of the Catholic Church worldwide and that's what later happened with the CIA and in those days about which we are discussing now this plan was started to be uh, to, to come effective to to come into effect you know I relate to this but uh, listeners we are archived for a week at libertyarchives.com. I think you might want to hear this twice. All right, now, uh, first of all, Martin, very shortly we have to take two minutes off for commercials. Now, uh, I'd say you're doing very well with your English, and I think, it, I think your story makes sense. It's starting to become clearer. So we'll head on this road in... Uh, three minutes time and if you have a way to for people to get a hold of you and you want this um, in a minute or two you can plug yourself folks our guest is Martin de la Sengla I hope I'm pronouncing it right this is very Chamish I'll see you in three minutes
visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast and the truth about God's chosen people and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Yeah, hi folks, it's Barry Chamish, and I'm doing my best for you, and we're doing all right. You get all my books at lulu.com, that's www.lulu.com. There's a search box right in my last name, Chamish, C-H-A-M-I-S-H. You'll get to my books, I do a lot of my own research on the Vatican in them. That's why this interests me tremendously. And my website is barrychamish.com. Uh, Martin, do you want people to get a hold of you? Um, people may contact me, maybe, if you want, through you. If you insist, then I can give you a uh, email address. I, I have think no that website of myself, no book to sell. Go ahead, give your email address. De underscore L A underscore S E N G L E at Yahoo dot com. Boy, that was I'm gonna ask you one more time slowly. Um, I got lost with the address. One more time. D E underscore L A underscore S E N G L E at yahoo.com. Folks, I'm not even sure I know what an underscore is, but I can imagine the line now. Now let's go back. We have now got Galen talking with Dallas, and what you say is that the German Bund is a child of these talks, a child of the CIA. Um, that you agree on, but what throws me is that 
Rome had a desire to get as many Nazis to America. Now, look, there were two operations. The one to America was called Operation Paperclip, where Nazis were, well, they were in Catholic, uh, uh, well, Franciscan, whatever. They were, they were held in Catholic institutions before assuming new uh, uh, data about their new life and their new identities in Central America. These uh, Operation Paperclip, why did the Nazis want to get as many of their people to America? And why did the Americans agree? Let's go into this. Now, this was... The, the goal was uh, to have the Nazi idea survive. Right. So let's separate Nazis from Germany. So the well, Nazi at that time in '45, there wasn't much of a separation. Now, let's talk about '44. '44. Hitler was oh, not was. <laughs> seen personally after September, around September 1944. There was. Uh, no, no one of the public has seen him, has seen Hitler, after September or so, or November in 1944. Let's talk about he was already out of country. Many things happened. Then. Out of the country? You know? What about the films with him uh, patting the cheeks of 14-year-old uh, so-called soldiers? That was taken in the um, late winter of 45. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he wasn't out of the country then. He was in Berlin. There, there was, there was a, da a double. There have been doubles. That's, oh, okay. That, that's what I. That's what I have heard from several voices, from several people. So, the great by chance there was a double, and Hitler himself escaped to Argentina. <coughs> and with him, many thousand other Nazis escaped to our That wasn't paperclip. That was. Um, that was part of paperclip. That was part of paperclip. Paperclip, as we know, paperclip. <coughs> we know that scientists, you know, um, rocket scientists, atomic right. scientists, nuclear scientists, were taken uh, to America. Were brought to America <coughs> by Operation Paperclip. But Paperclip also was to stuff the CIA worldwide, at least in the Americas. And you know. Okay. And I'm going to accept for now that the Hitler in the movies, Padding Cheeks, was a double. Um, and he was in Argentina doing what? He, he stayed in a hotel of a friend of his. There was a Nazi who owned a hotel in Argentina, and Hitler stayed there. Silent. All right. Nothing Let's heard of him. Let's leave that side of the story. Uh, let's not focus on it. Um, a separate show, you give me the proofs of that. I, I have, by the way, seen the pictures. A guest of mine, uh, Jerome Corsi, has... Uh, uh, pictures supposedly of Hitler in Argentina. I've heard this before, but I'm I'm a little bit skeptical. So let's uh, of Operation Paperclip. I'm not. Why did the all right to keep the idea alive? Why? All right. Let's dive into Reinhard Galen and and the Vatican and, <coughs> and the Franciscans and why did they? In essence, why did the Vatican provably keep Nazism going? A deal was made. The deal was about two things which the, Tur which the Nazis had to deliver. One thing was a spy, a working spy organization behind the Eastern front lines. America didn't have this. America wanted to have a spy organization in Asia, in Russia, and in Asia. There also, to this organization, also belong contacts to uh, drug cartels, not in 
Latin America, but in Asia, Southeast Asia. You know, All right. Are, so, yeah? who got these? And, All and right, Mer you have instant intelligence. Again, Southeast Asia and Russia were certainly, after the Second World War, um, not allies of America. But this story yeah. is very complicated. Who was the deal made with? Was it with America to get spies yes. in Russia? Yes. yes, yes. Galen delivered the spy organization to the new to be founded CIA. And the CIA, you know, the C of CIA is in discussion whether it was uh, in the beginning Catholic or Central Intelligence Agency. And again, the Vatican comes in how? Besides Galen's brother. By the way, what did Hans Galen do in the Vatican? Hans Galen, he was the secretary of the Grand Master. Um, of the Grand Master in, um, in the Vatican. Now the, it was the, the time when, the, you know, the order had no place of itself. They were expelled from Malta by Napoleon. They had been expelled from Malta by Napoleon Bonaparte. And um, since that time, they resided in the Vatican. And there he served. All right, the monastery. So the Vatican gave up. Uh, uh, wow, they had two major monastic orders hiding yeah. Nazis. And the figures I've read are from 50 to 100,000 went through this Operation Paperclip. This was a big operation where the Nazis were cooperating with America to get, uh, I guess, the best scientists to America explain this. This is a major operation. This is a major operation. They not only uh, brought uh, Nazis out of Germany without making them prisoners of war or without persecuting them, but they also delivered the Hiroshima bomb to America. Okay, I read America this from you. Have um, America didn't oh, have heck, enough go defense. on with it. It's a little off track, but what the heck. They delivered the nuclear material that they exploded over Hiroshima yeah. from the Nazi store. Yeah. They had enough uh, later also to, to equip uh, Russia. The Russians took uh, nearly a ton of fissile material from Germany for their reactors. All that's, right. Now, that's, by that's the way, East Germany was certainly under Russian control, so I can see a war between East and West using Nazis, and maybe, you know what? You're the second guest in two weeks that have made this claim that the American bomb would not have exploded without Nazi cooperation. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I can. You know, it's it's hard to prove it, but uh, your I have heard uh, your other guest before, and I all for all I know, he is right. For all that I know, he is right. Well, for all we know, the plot did take place, and there was. Two monastic orders was the Franciscans and Jesuits, Franciscans, Dominicans, but they hid thousands upon thousands of Nazis and shipped them off primarily to South America, but plenty to North America as well. The operation existed. I would expand. Uh, why, oh, why? Did America, the noble and moral, agree to this operation? Now, for to become the world leader of technology, you know, until that time, until that time, Germany was leading the world in technology. America was a leader in mass production, but the technology had to be developed somewhere. And it was developed in, in, in Nazi Germany. 
For instance, the B-2 bomber, which as we know it today, had been developed in Germany during World War II. It was flown in 1940, 1943 uh, in the German skies and was developed by the brothers Horton. All right, that's the plot, all for their knowledge. The Vatican, though, it, this Operation Paperclip could not have su succeeded without the Vatican. Couldn't have happened. It, no, why, oh, why did they agree? Come on, the Vatican does it need... Is, it is, you know, the question is trust. Why should, the Ameri why should Americans trust a Nazi like Galen? Why should, a Ga why should Galen trust Americans, which uh, try to promise him anything? You know, there was one man in the middle, and that was in the Vatican. And this man in the middle, what did he sell to those? He sells them, trust each other. We, the great church, stand behind Galen. What he tells you is true, and... Uh, to Galen, he told what, what the Americans tell you, all the promises are true. We, the great universal church, stand behind the words. Now, I want to add something now. The Vatican connection is enormous. Well, without diving into Kurt Waldheim, I mean, he just exterminated Jews and became a world leader. But let's talk Pope Benedict XVI, who was in the Gestapo and volunteered for the Gestapo, uh, and he became Pope. Um, come on, you don't have to be a great journalist to know that you had a Nazi Pope. What's going on here? And by the way, add what the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, CDF, is when you explain. Yeah, no, look, the, the church is just like a country, and is equipped like a country, with intelligent systems. One system was the order of the sovereign order of Malta, which was uh, to spy on other faces, what, uh, why, why the CIA is spying on other countries. Now in the church it's about other faces, though mainly on Muslims, and they know very, very much about them, and they are also uh, doing very much about uh, and within and among, among uh, right. the uh, Saracens, uh, let, let's say the Muslims. Well, the, Tur the Arabs right. now. Yeah, um, the Arabs. Look, and, uh, I'm going back to this. What your Russia? claim is a, a, a plot under the plot mm -hmm. that the Anglican Communion is actually united now. Yeah. You call it the Holy Inquisition. Um, but let's not avoid this issue of uh, Pope Benedict the yeah. Sixteenth. And oh. if this is true, you're going to get a lot of ticked-off Protestants. Can can you dive uh, explaining who Cardinal Levada was in this whole story? Yeah, I can explain it. Now Ratzinger and had a brother and uh, one. Uh, held the other up high. So Ratzinger, I have seen it. You know, I have, I have friends, close friends to mine. They studied theology in Tübingen at the time when Ratzinger was in Tübingen and when Hans Küng was in Tübingen. And you know, they have been doctrinal enemies. Maybe you do not know the story between. No, and no Hans. I don't. It was in the 1970s. So, when my friends uh, studied uh, theology in Tübingen. Now, Ratzinger then became the, the boss <laughs> of the CDF. Now, the CDF is a congregation of the doctrine of the faith. And uh, this congregation of the doctrine of the faith, or for the faith, is nothing else but the... Uh, Inquisition of uh, the middle, medieval ages. Just uh, how? How? Uh, 
that means they're gathering intelligence about the Vatican. I uh, not, not about the Vatican, but about the people which believed and which teached uh, or taught taught Christian faith. So Hans Küng was one of those which were teachers, and Hans Küng didn't teach the doctrine according to the thoughts of the Pope and according to the teaching of the Pope. So King was a little bit of controversy. The church must be more open to female priests or something like that. Okay, a minor issue, but okay. Yeah, so... But he was in favor of that, so... The Rating intelligence... Uh, uh, you got me. You, you actually have me confused. They're gathering intelligence, and one of the things they found was that he was in favor of female priests. Yeah, not, not only in favor of female priests. This story continued later. Uh, when Ratzinger became Pope, Cardinal William Levada, or William Cardinal Levada, became his successor in the CDF, and uh, Levada then had to deal with American nuns with nuns in America, because they also wanted to, we do not want the priests above us, we are the same as the priests, we know as much as the priests know, and, you know, that was a kind of... Uh, right, an upright. insurrection was happening in America, this and he put an end to it. He put an end to it, yes. That was, that was his, uh, that's his business. That was his business, to, to put an end to it, however he did it. He had to do it. But before all this stood together intelligence about the people within Catholic, or nowadays it's within Christian faith. All right, so he united. Now, I guess the Anglican Commission communion must be American. No, 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 no. The, uh, the Church of England separated from the Roman Catholic Church with Henry VIII. You know, Henry right. VIII was... And he brought them from, back into the fold. And, and now William Cardinal Levada succeeded in bringing the Anglican Confession, and part of the Anglican Confession is the Church of England. He brought them back to be united with the Roman Catholic Church again. But nobody knows this. Oh, it's, 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 if you look for it, it's all over the papers. It's, I, I found it. I found it. It was, okay. it was the work of William Cardinal Levada. And uh, the, great, the great question was, what about married priests? Because within the Anglican Communion, there yeah. are married priests. And uh, it's possible to have married priests within the Roman Catholic Church now, but it's not possible to have female priests within the Roman Catholic Church now. And All the right. other now, is to, to my have... listeners who are undoubtedly Catholic, bet you didn't know this. All right, away we go. So the, the question was to have married bishops, and that's actually not possible, it's not officially possible to have uh, married bishops within the Roman Catholic Church, but priests, yes. All right, folks, now, what we're talking about is a man who, his family anyways, was on the, on the very roots of the secret Vatican, and... I'm going to ask you, who is Francesco Pacelli, and what is Le, B Le Observatoire Romano? Um, again, dive in. Yeah, we have two brothers, again, you know, um, you, Okay, his brother was Pope Pius XII. His brother? Please? Okay. Uh, right. Ratzinger needed uh, the help of his brother, 
vor allem the moral the moral help of his brother to become a uh, pope and so Francesco Pacelli was a lawyer in uh, in Rome and became the lawyer of the uh, Vatican and he started or founded the Osservatore Romano that's a newspaper of the Vatican the official newspaper because he found the necessity to give out the thoughts in the way the Vatican wanted people to know what the Vatican thinks. And how did Pope Pius XII, he was really not well regarded amongst Jews, let me tell you that. How did he fit in this? No, he, he started propaganda. You know, that's, that's what, that's what uh, Francesco Pacelli did. He started Vatican propaganda. And uh, his brother, Eugenio Pacelli, became Pope Pius XII then. Because Francesco, brother Francesco, knew about the secrets that you need to own the public opinion. Well, he knew about the Holocaust and kept that out of the news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay. So. All right. All right. Folks, in short, uh, the Pope during the Holocaust uh, was aided by his brother Francesco to become a PR manager in yeah. essence, right? Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a fact. That's the fact. Yes? That's the fact. And so, and therefore, you know, they, they have hit so many things behind the scene and separated uh, what they did into a front stage and into a backstage. And in the front stage, things were made visible, and in the backstage, there were spies and there were secret talks. And that's how the business is working today. Now, we don't have much time, but I want to ask, what is this Pope going to be doing in America in a month? Uh, what's, he, what's he coming for? You know, we, we have what we call ecumene. This is, uh, there is no difference anymore between... Um, evangelical churches and uh, between the Roman Catholic Church. You know, it's all the same. We are all the same. Oh, you know what, uh, Martin, we're going to have to end. That was a very, very good speech. I know English is not your first language, but it was flawless. And I'll tell you how to get your people to hear this show later on. Folks, that was Martin de la Sengla. Coming up now is Jonathan Stern and a very different interview. Thank you, Martin. We'll see you, Thanks, everybody sir. in seven minutes' time. This has been Barry Chapman.